believe it or not, today is Christmas Sunday. Kind of doesn't feel like it, but guess what? It's the Sunday before Christmas, and Christmas is Saturday. So happy, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. So glad that you are here today, and I'm so excited to see the entire production of Home for Christmas. Derek has an amazing voice, and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful uh, short film. You're not going to want to miss it. Remember, just go to our website, bridgeway.cc. You'll be able to watch that at 6 p.m. on Friday night, Christmas Eve. And thank you for all of you who have signed up to serve our communities all around this Maryland area. So I will be there in many different locations, along with so many of you serving our community on Christmas Eve morning. Last week, I started a brand new series called The Name I Need. Last week, we talked about his mighty name. Today, we're going to talk about his manifested name. And then next Sunday, our God Story Sunday, we're going to talk about his miraculous name. So you don't want to miss that. And then before you know it, we're into the new year. Uh, for the first three Sundays of the new year, I'm starting a brand new series called Revival. Revival. We're going to talk about water. We're going to talk about wind and we're gonna talk about wine. So make sure you're here for the first three Sundays. And then the fourth Sunday is our State of the Church Address, as well as our grand opening uh, for our Columbia campus, the entire full building where your kids can come and you'll see the, the uh, Real Talk Corridor, you'll see uh, the Graces of Chapel. So make sure you prepare and tell family and friends that we have a grand opening on the fourth Sunday of January, which is gonna be our State of the Church Address. And then before you know it, we're into our winter guest speaker series, and I'll tell you more about that in the days to come. Let's bow for a short word of prayer and get right into his manifested name. Father, we are grateful that you would allow your person and your power to be manifested in a very present way in our lives. And for each person under the sound of my voice, wherever they are in the world, would you come into their world today and let them know that you can be present with them. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to read a familiar scripture of Christmas prophecy, if you will, that many of you may be able to quote even as I'm reading it. For others, it may be new to you, but over 800 years before Jesus was ever born, it was prophesied by Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 6, that he would be born uh, to a virgin in Bethlehem, and specifically he would be given some great names that are attached to his calling as the Messiah. If you're familiar with the passage in Isaiah 9, 6, then enjoy the fresh hearing of it being read to you now, and maybe you can even say it with me. But at Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 are the two verses we're going to look at. It starts like this. For to us, you could probably say it with me, right? A child is born. To us, a son is given. Let's pause just for a moment. A child is born. That shows the humanity of our God through Jesus Christ. A son is given, that shows us the divinity of God. He's always been a son, but he was given to us to be born. So that's his humanity. So we see right there, for unto us a child is born, it's first time a son is given. He's always been the son, never born before he came to earth. Let's keep, keep going now. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called, you want to say it with me? What is it? Wonderful counselor, mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Jewish prophet, Isaiah, prophesied that this Messiah would be would be called four great names, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Say that in the chat, just those four names. Just fill the chat with, with those four names. Wonderful Counselor, some of you know him as that. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, 
Prince of Peace. It looks good just written there, doesn't it? But what is it about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that would encapsulate all these great names? And is it possible that God gave us Jesus so that whatever aspect of God we needed manifested in our lives would come to pass as we mature in Christ? And is it not true that when we invite Jesus Christ into our lives, we indeed get all of God? When God comes into our life, we get all of God. The question is, does he get all of us? As we grow to mature and become mighty in Christ to begin to to get closer to him, we start seeing new aspects of God manifested in our lives as we pursue all of him. Now, like I said, when he comes into your life, you get all of him. But as you mature in Christ and as you as you grow in Christ, you begin to see different aspects of who this God is that you have all of. One man stated on my radio show, he says, after 13 years of marriage, I thought I knew my wife. Oh, how naive. He realized that after many more years that he was just scratching the surface of truly getting to know her. Another radio listener said to me, Dr. Anderson, after almost 50 years of marriage, I can say that I have loved every woman my wife has become over the decades. She's grown and she's changed. Here's the point. If it takes a lifetime to truly get to know one other person who changes and and grows and, and matures and transforms, Why would we think that we can know all of God in the span of only one human lifetime? We have all of God, but we don't know all of God. This comes with maturity. This comes with seeking. And I believe that we will be learning the manifestations of God all throughout eternity, even when we get to heaven, in the the decades, in the years, in the centuries beyond as we get to heaven He's going to be manifesting different aspects of who he is because he is indeed God. But I believe that we can continue to see the new aspects of God throughout our lives as we press in, as we grow, as we move from dimension to dimension. And I believe that this this passage we see, we begin to look to see that there's more than just Just the names, but God will manifest himself through this Messiah, Jesus, who will have these four great names. But before we look at these four great names, there's something else that I've seen in the passage that has tended to escape me. So we'll look at the names in particular. But first, let's take a broader view to see something that I think might be quite helpful for us as we look at this prophetic Christmas prophecy. These names fall in between two other words that may escape us. Do you know what these two other words are? It's quite profound when you think about it. Like I said, I've often missed it when I read the Christmas passage, but it's the word government. Notice that it's sandwiched. These names, four names, are sandwiched between Government, that's written in the first phrase of, chap- of, of verse 6 and in the first phrase of verse 7. Let me read it again and see if you pick it up. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the, here it is, government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his, here it is, government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Did you see that? Government mentioned in verse 6 and in verse 7 with those four names sandwiched in between. So let's consider what the prophet Isaiah is trying to teach us about the Messiah. In fact, the point is simply this, that the manifested names that are available are only available to those who are in and under the governing kingdom of God. That those four Christmas names, those four names of God manifested through the Messiah Jesus are only available to those who are in and under the governing kingdom of God. 
Let's observe what comes with this great governing kingdom of God. I'm going to give you four aspects of God's great governance. And we see it right here. The first aspect of God's great governance is peace. Check out verse 7a. Of the increase of his government and peace. The governing kingdom of God is one of peace, a place of peace. When you come into a relationship with God and you come in and under his governing kingdom, you are in a place of peace. Secondly, power. It says in that same verse, 7b, he will, here are two words, reign on David's throne. Those two words, reign and throne, are words demonstrating power and authority. So when you come in and under God's governing kingdom, it is a place of peace and a seat of power. But there are two other words that we see. It goes on to say, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. Let's take the first one, justice, and then we'll talk about righteousness. That the great governing aspects of God's kingdom are peace, power, and thirdly, putting things right. That's what justice is, putting things right, establishing and upholding it with justice. Justice is about putting things right that are wrong. When something unjust happens, justice comes in to try to rectify that which is wrong. So a part of God's governance is to rectify things that have been done wrong on the earth. And so when he comes back, whether it's happening on this side of heaven or in heaven, once we get to heaven, all justice will be taken care of. Everything that the Lord did before we get to heaven is to move us toward justice. But the ultimate judgment of God is the court of God's justice where he is putting things right. In a way, that should be an encouragement to someone who wonders, like one of my callers uh, a week or so ago, there's so much evil in the world. How can I believe in God? God is going to put and make everything right. His kingdom is one of justice. It's not only a place of peace, a seat of power, but a court of justice. But there's a fourth aspect to God's great governance, and that is the pure standard of moral rightness. That's that word righteousness. Remember, there's peace, there's power, there's justice, there's righteousness. And so the peace, power, putting it all right, there is this standard that makes things right. The pure standard of of moral rightness is what righteousness is. And it says in verse seven that he's establishing and upholding it. Righteousness is the pure standard of what is right. And when righteousness is broken, justice puts right that which is wrong. Hence, you have justice and righteousness working together. When we live righteous, there's no need for justice. But when righteousness is broken, then justice is necessary to put things back right again. And so the great governance of God's kingdom has these four aspects to it that allows us to enter in what these names actually mean and how they're manifested with the coming Messiah and how those names of the coming Messiah intersect with the governance of God's kingdom. So let's look at those aspects again and you tell me what name intersects with the aspect of God's kingdom, sort of a Christmas exam, if you will, multiple choice, if you will. And for those of you who've been studying and, and, and getting your degrees, especially during this, this uh, season of, of, you know, master's degrees, I know several people who have been uh, studying and, and getting their degrees, including Pastor David Heiliger, who we celebrate this week, got his master's degree in conflict transformation. Way to go, Pastor David. But many of you who have studied really hard, now the semester's kind of over and you could take a break. But you come to church, pastor's going to give you an exam. But this is really easy. Think about those four names. Think about those four aspects. So let's take the first one, peace. Which of the four names do you think intersect with the kingdom governance of peace? He's known as the what? The Prince of Peace. You can write that in there. So you're getting an A on the exam already. Got it? 
All right, remember the second aspect is God's power. So which one of the four names intersects then with God's power? Write it in there. Mighty God. Get it? And so the, the, the manifest name that connects with the aspect of God's kingdom is coming together right there. Peace, power. Now what about this one? Putting things right. What is the manifested name of the four names that you think would fit that? We've already used two of them. There are two left. This one may be a little tricky, so I'm going to give it to you. Wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. You see, that word counselor can mean a couple things. Comforter, as we know in the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit is known as the, the counselor, the comforter. It also can mean attorney. Have you ever called an attorney counselor? Have you ever heard them say counselor? Because an attorney, a defense attorney, Jesus is also our, with this, the Greek language says paraclete, the one who comes alongside and defends us when accusations are being made against us. And when you have a defense attorney, have you ever had a defense attorney? When you have a defense attorney, you are comforted that there's someone who is standing up for you, someone who is defending you, someone who can stand before a judge and begin to plead your case. Wonderful counselor. Jesus Christ is our defense attorney. But when you have a good defense attorney, and some of you know what I'm talking about, there's nothing more comforting. When you sit back and they say to you, I got this, it's going to be okay. We're going to go in before the judge, and this is what we're going to say and do. And I'm going to stand in your place, and I'm going to do everything. You just sit right there and let me handle this. I will stand with you. Nothing more comforting than that. Jesus is our defense attorney. But can I take it to another level? While having a defense attorney is comforting, I don't know one defense attorney, not one, that would ever say, and whatever punishment is leveled to the client from the judge's bench, I will take. Do you? Do you know any defense attorney that will take your money? They'll stand before the judge. They'll argue the best they can. But at the end of the day, when the judgment is made, do you know of one defense attorney that says, and whatever the judgment is, I will not only defend you, but I will accept the consequences of your behavior. I don't know one. <laughs> but Jesus He's the only defense attorney who defends before a holy and righteous judge, but he is willing to take on the punishment on behalf of the client, you and me. And the sentence that was handed down, that is handed down from on high, is the death penalty. This is why Jesus is our wonderful counselor. I mean, there, there are a lot of good counselors, but there's only one wonderful counselor. So did you get that one? Okay, that's, that's how that one connects. What about the fourth one, the, the pure standard of rightness or, or righteousness? Well, there's only one left, everlasting father. You see, the father's standard is one of pure righteousness, and the wonderful counselor takes on that that consequence that we have. And as a result of that, we are forgiven. But what the text reminds us is that that forgiveness is held up. It's established and held up. It says in verse seven, forever and ever, for eternity, everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And his righteousness and forgiveness for you and me as prodigals will have no end, as it says in verse seven. Now, you might say, well, this is, this is good stuff, Pastor. Theologically, we can see the manifested names of Jesus intersecting with the great governance of God's kingdom. His kingdom of peace and, and power and putting things right and pure righteousness. Pastor, how do these names manifest in everyday life? 
personally for, for me right now as I'm on my couch or in my kitchen, in my car, or in my bedroom. Well, understand the broader point, friends, that the names and titles that, that are given to the coming Messiah who did come are only available to those who are under the governing power of God. You cannot access the power and the provision of these names unless you are in Christ. When you put your trust in the Christ of Christmas, then these four names that are Christ are intersected and available to you when you are sandwiched in between his governance, just like the verses. Jesus is available to be with you. I'll talk about that next week. But the manifestation of all that he can be in your life only happens when you invite him into your life. You can't know him as mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, you, you can't know him like that until you come into a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is the open door to all the other manifestations of God that he wants to show you. That's the beauty of Christmas. It's the gift that you open up that keeps on giving. So you've got to understand that broader point. But still, you might be asking, well, how, does this, how does this intersect into my life? Well, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to continue our exam. I'm going to give you four scenarios and you tell me which, which one needs to be manifested in each story. Let's call the first story the broken hearted man named Andrew. I'm going to read it to you. A young man came home from boot camp in the military and his family was so proud of his accomplishments. He subsequently went off to college to study for a few years. Shortly after he entered college, he got word from his family that his father was going in for an unexpected surgery. This military trained and newly motivated college student began to fast and pray, but to no avail. Surprisingly, this young man lost his father to death and his family grieved. What name, prophetic name of God, do you believe needs to be manifested in the life of broken-hearted Andrew. See, now it's no longer a test. Now Andrew actually needs him. What manifested name does he need? Well, maybe he needs a couple of them. I would say wonderful counselor, not as a defense, but as a comforter. An everlasting father, maybe one that would never leave him. You see, my name is David. Andrew Anderson, and that's my story. I needed God in my life, and I needed him to be manifested as my comforter when I was 21 years old, and my father just died on us. I mean, it was just a gallbladder surgery. And he came out, and, and the other family members were there at Washington at Venice Hospital, and he seemed fine, and, and we got the, got the communication from everyone. You can stop praying and fasting, dad came out of surgery and he's doing great. And with that only hours later, after my mom left the hospital, she goes, are you, are you, you okay, honey? To which my mom says, he said, I'm fine. And he asked her, what, why are all the, the nurses and they look like angels, they're all in white. And she said, oh, honey, I don't know but I'll come back and I'll see you in the morning. You sure you're good? I'm fine. And then once mom got home, she got the phone call to come back because he had passed away. And I got the phone call in Chicago that the one we had just celebrated coming out of gallbladder surgery has died. You see, it's no longer theological when you're in God's governing kingdom and what you need more than anything else. It's the wonderful counselor to comfort you and the everlasting father who will never leave you. Well, let me give you a second story. And you tell me what manifested name is here. Maybe this is somebody's story. 
It's called the fit to be tied mother, Gloria. Gloria has been driving around town all day, every day for the last several weeks like an Uber driver for her kids. One child has soccer games or practices almost every day, and the other has to be at swim lessons three early mornings per week. Gloria's husband is traveling for a few days with his job where he is making a big presentation in front of his boss to a potential client. If her husband does well, the presentation could positively change the outcome of their shoestring budget finances. And as she runs the highways and the byways, Gloria tries to remember to pray for her husband while shuffling between kids' sports schedules, school schedules, dinner for the kids, and grocery shopping so she can make a nice dinner for her husband when he gets home tomorrow night. Out of all the times for one of their pets to get sick, one of the family dogs is displaying painful signs of discomfort, and the only time the vet can see the dog is during the one hour she had scheduled to shop for groceries. After dropping off the last child to school and taking the dog to the vet, Gloria only has 35 minutes to get the items for tomorrow's dinner. Once Gloria parks in one of the only spaces at the grocery store that's left, all the way in the back of the parking lot, she unexpectedly breaks down and starts sobbing uncontrollably, feeling overwhelmed. Gloria doesn't even know why she's crying. She just knows that she doesn't have time to cry. So she mops up her tears and runs into the store. What prophetic name of God do you believe she needs manifested in her life right now? Answer? Right in the chat. Prince of Peace. Like right now, Lord, in the midst of all the craziness, she needs the Prince of Peace to show up. And then when you're in the governing kingdom of God, sandwiched in between the governance of an almighty God of peace and power, putting things right and pure moral rightness, right now is where she needs you. Anybody, anybody need the Prince of Peace right now? Maybe, maybe you put that in the chat. Prince of Peace. I need you. All right, let me give you a third one. We'll, we'll call this the Hope Dast couple, Don and Kate. Don and his, his wife Kate just learned shocking news from the doctor that Kate has cancer. On Friday is when they got the news just a couple days ago. They are devastated by the news. Kate had never had medical issues before. Don and Kate had been faithful followers of Jesus for years and even served regularly in their church. Their faith is strong, but their hearts are heavy. They are praying for a miracle and asking God to take the cancer away. Don and Kate's desire was to retire within a few months from their profession, sell their house, and move to another country to be missionaries. But this new unexpected diagnosis has got them reeling and praying and questioning everything right now. Are their plans out the window now? How do they even process this upsetting news that Kate's body is racked with cancer? They are so worried about what could happen to her. Their hopes and their dreams are being dashed right now before their very eyes. Well, what prophetic name of God needs to be manifested in the life of this hope-dashed couple, Don and Kate? Well, maybe it's a few of those names. Sometimes, sometimes have you ever thought about, Lord, I need more than one name. <laughs> God, I need more than one name right now. I need many aspects of you, of you, God, manifested in my life. I think that might have happened here because they need mighty God, right? The power of God to come and move in her body with cancer. They need wonderful counselor. They need comforting because they just got this bad news. And most of all, they're anxious about their future and dreams. Maybe they need Prince of Peace. And friends, I know this story because it was on Monday, April 1st, a couple of years ago, that we walked into the house of this couple we'll call Don and Kate. And while we walked in on Monday, April the 1st, never had met them before. We were looking at purchasing their house. We weren't sure. And this man comes to me and he says, I can't believe you're here. And just on Friday, my wife got a cancer diagnosis. 
So we stood in the kitchen of that house, and I'll never forget it, holding the realtor's hand and holding this couple's hand and my wife's hand. We prayed. And I asked God to bless two houses, the one that we're standing in, and for the sale of it, whatever it was supposed to be, and for her house, the house of her body, that God would reverse the curse and reverse the cancer in her body. That's what we prayed right there in the kitchen. And we prayed it in the name of Jesus. That was on Monday, April 1st. That Thursday after praying with our elders, I decided to give him a call. And I gave him a call just randomly. I said, God wanted me to, to, to call you. I felt the sense that I'm supposed to call you. How you doing? He, puts, he says, can I put you on speaker? He puts me on speaker. He's in the car with his wife. He goes, Pastor Anderson, why are you calling? I said, hey, I just want to check on you. I've been praying for you this week. He says, you're not going to believe this, but we're leaving Anne Arundel Hospital right now, and they tell me that my, my wife's cancer is cured. We're on our way to Hopkins right now to get a second opinion. I said, wow. Well, let me know what happens after you go to Hopkins. So they go to Hopkins. The next morning I call. I said, so what does Hopkins say? And this is, this is what the man said. He says, Dr. Anderson, they don't like to use the word cured. So they just said that my wife is in 100% remission. I said, I don't care what you call it. We asked God to reverse that thing, and he did within a week of the time she got the diagnosis. Somebody needs God to be their mighty God in this moment. Somebody needs God's, God's power to move in their life in this moment. When you're in the governing kingdom of God, you have access to the movements and the power of God manifested only to those who have come through the name of Jesus. I can't say that would happen in every single case, but I'm going to ask every single time. And I'll let God worry about the percentages. Okay, how about the fourth one? The fourth and final one. This is Damien. This is pretty easy, right? Because there's only one sort of name left, and the title's going to give it away. Here it is, the daddy deficit boy named Damien. Damien was told that his father would show up to take him out for a father-son time. He was four years old the first time he heard this. Now he is 14, and his father is still not around. Growing up, in classrooms where other kids talked about their fathers, Damien could not help but think that he had been abandoned. His single mother often tries to find other male role models for Damien to spend time with, but the reality is that this is hard. It's painful for Damien and his mother. They lean on each other and pray to God for help, security, and esteem. But to be honest, Damien has an emotional pain in his heart that just won't go away. And he acts out continually now that he's a teenager. Because his human dad is not around, he turns to other male voices from school, rap music, and television to try to figure out what manhood really is. Of course, this is all unconscious or at least subconscious, but his mother sees it as clear as day. In a church youth group, Damien hears about the Lord's Prayer, and the prayer starts out like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is a hard prayer for Damien to relate to because the only other father he knows is one that was not there for him and doesn't even want him. How can he know that God, his heavenly Father, is any different? So what manifested name do you believe Damien needs? Everlasting Father. See, in the great governing kingdom of God, we all need the manifested names of God to bring us peace and power, to put things right that are wrong, and we need his pure moral rightness in our life. And this comes as we grow and we mature in Christ. But let me ask you a personal question. Let's make it personal. What's your story right now? What aspect of God's manifest presence, what name of God do you need in your life? Regardless of your experiences on earth, when you invite Jesus of Christmas into your life, he will manifest himself 
in a way that meets every deficit that you have on the earth. See, the best thing you can do is come home for Christmas. Experience the manifest presence of God in his governing kingdom so you can live at peace and with the power of God. But how do you need him to manifest himself in your life today? You see, he doesn't just manifest himself as the great governing God of the universe, but he wants you to access him in the universe of your own personal journey, story, narrative, and life. Can I tell you something? There are many Christians who never or seldom experience the manifest presence of God. Can I say to you Christians, come home for Christmas. Come back, like, like it's said about Peter and John in my message last week, that they spent time with Jesus. Well, maybe you should come home for Christmas. Come back into a relationship with Jesus, like the prodigal son who came home. Come home. Come into and back under the covering of God's governing power. Come home. Come home. Come home for Christmas. Cry out that the, that the manifest presence of God would become real in your life. And the best gift for Christmas that you could have is the fact that God so loved you that he would give you not only what you need, but who you need. His son, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace. So I pray right now that you would invite the manifest presence of God in your living room, in your car, in your kitchen, in the seat you sit in right now between you and God. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, and invite Jesus into your heart if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior. And if you do, that he would manifest himself in many different ways to meet the very need that you have. Dear God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask you to manifest yourself as mighty God in my situation right now. As wonderful counselor in my situation right now. As everlasting father in my situation right now. As prince of peace right now. I invite you in as my savior to forgive me for my sins and to come into my life and to save me. Lord, I'm coming home for Christmas. As a non-believer, I want to be a believer. Save me. As a believer, save me. I'm coming home for Christmas. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. And now listen to me. For those of you under the sound of my voice, I declare and I decree that the wonderful counselor will be your defender and your comforter this week as you grieve whatever losses that you face during this holiday season. There are people that may not be with you this year that were with you last year. I declare God's wonderful comforting power over you. I declare and I decree that the power of the mighty God will unleash will be unleashed against any sickness, against any disease, against any ailment or virus or foe or enemy that seeks to hurt or harm you as God's deliverance affects your healing and your restoration in Jesus' name. And I declare and I decree that you will come Listen, that you will call on and lean on your everlasting father, believing that your eternal destiny is secure and that your sonship in him will never be threatened. 
May you know in your heart of hearts that your heavenly father will ne- listen to me. Your heavenly father will never leave you nor forsake you, dear child of God. I'm going to repeat that one before I give my last one. I declare and decree that you will call on and lean on your everlasting father, believing that your eternal destiny is secure and that your sonship will never be threatened. May you know in your heart of hearts that your heavenly father will never leave you nor forsake you, dear child of God. Last and finally, I declare this. And in fact, you might right there where you are, you might just want to lift your hands in submission to God on this one. It's about the Prince of Peace. If you need peace, if you have anxiety, you have concern and fear, this one's just for you. So you've got to receive it. Are you ready? I declare and I decree that the peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus as the Prince of Peace calms your spirit during this holiday week from all anxiety, all worry, all confusion, and all fear. The peace of God is yours as you release your cares to him in the mighty and manifested name of Jesus. Amen and amen.